watercolor is the perfect medium for painting water. No surprise there. So for this video, I've compiled three ways you can paint realistic reflections on the water using watercolor paint. I'm doing these exercises with the same flamingo image three times, so you can clearly see the difference between these techniques. Here's what you'll need to get started. Watercolor paper. For best results, use 100% cotton. I'm using Arch's 140 pound hot press cotton watercolor paper today. You'll need a pencil for sketching, a water jar, paper towel for blotting, a palette for mixing, and just two watercolor paint colors. For the flamingo, I'm using Holbein Scarlet Lake, and for the sky and water, I'm using M. Graham Manganese Blue Hue. For my brushes, I have two different round brushes, a larger size eight round brush for quick washes, and a smaller size four round brush for the details. I've placed strips of tape on my paper, separating it into three equal sections. Start with a sketch. You can either trace on the image three times or just freehand sketch them one at a time like you see me doing here. You can download my reference photo and sketch in the description below this video. Because we want to make the flamingo anus reflection the same size, make sure you clearly mark the center of your paper where the water line will be. The first one will probably take the most time because you'll essentially sketch the flamingo twice, right side up and upside down. The goal is to create a perfect mirror image. Once you're happy with your sketch, paint your flamingo. I'm using my smaller brush for this. Add some water to your paint for lighter values in the neck and along the curve of the back. You can use darker pigment on the underside of the belly and the neck and to make the bird more three-dimensional. It's really up to you how much detail you want to add here. For those darker values on the flamingo, I just mix my manganese blue and the scarlet lake color to create a dark, almost black, purple. This is great for the beak, the shadows on the belly, and for those spindly gray legs. Now paint the reflected bird exactly the same way. Try to use the same colors, the same values, and shadow shapes. Once you've completed the flamingo and its reflection, let it dry completely. The next step is to simply paint the blue sky and water. Using your manganese blue hue or whatever blue you've chosen, paint a wash of color around the flamingo then lay down a flat wash of blue over the entire water area, going right over the top of your reflected flamingo. The wash of blue dulls the colors and makes it look like they're in the water. This style of water looks flat and glassy, undisturbed by wind, with that lovely serene reflection. This second style of painting reflections is probably my favorite one. Once again, sketch on your flamingo, but you don't have to be super specific with the sketch in the water. Just try to get the basic proportions lightly sketched in. Enough information so you know where to put the pink color. Paint your flamingo in sky again. Now this time, for the reflections, we're creating the look of broken, rippling water. So you'll need to use gentle, horizontal brush strokes to achieve this effect. Be careful to hold your brush firmly without letting your brush tip curve. The goal is to get nice, even, horizontal lines. Start with the blue color first, painting the lines up to the shape of the flamingo's reflection, and even pushing some of those blue lines into that shape and over the legs, creating the appearance of rippling, moving water. You can even miss areas of the paper, leaving little slivers of white. Next, paint in the pink color. Add the dark values, still using those same horizontal brush strokes, and allow some of the pink to push beyond the border of the reflection. The blue and pink should look like long, skinny, intersecting puzzle pieces along the edges of the flamingo's silhouette. Within the flamingo's body shape, you can add curvy, wavy lines for even more detail. Now for the last technique, we will use wet and wet to paint the reflection. Once again, paint the top half of your painting the exact same way as you did the first two. Now for the water, timing will be very important. If you add paint while the paper is still too wet, it might fade away uncontrollably. But if you wait too long, you may end up with backwash or the cauliflower effect. So it might be a good idea to practice your timing here on a scrap piece of paper first. Start by painting clean water all over the area, making sure it's spread out evenly with no puddling. You can let it dry for a brief moment before brushing in the blue color. Working quickly, paint in the pink color. Painting the two colors right up next to each other will cause those two colors to soften into each other naturally. Then you can add your dark values on the beak and legs over the top. So there are all three finished flamingos. Let me know in the comments which style you like best. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new here. And check out these other videos on watercolor techniques. Thanks so much for watching.